In Colombia, a criminal kingpin is having a good time with a lady in a jacuzzi when suddenly, a quick shot from a sniper kills him right there in the water. Meanwhile in Virginia, a former Marine is spending the evening in a motel while heavily drinking. After looking at some pictures of his old squad and remembering how many of them aren't around anymore, not to mention the PTSD left behind by war, he decides to end things for himself. Days later, a funeral is thrown in his honor. Master Sergeant Brandon, a former member of the late Marine squad, grieves for his old friend and expresses bafflement at his choices, wondering how a legend could end up like that. His friend Major Miller reminds him that their job can take a toll on a soldier's mind, making Brandon wonder if that's ever gonna happen to him too. Miller also has a new mission for Brandon in Columbia to help the DEA with an important case. Brandon refuses because he has his grief to deal with, but Miller ignores him and just makes him take the car that is already there waiting for him to take him to the agency's private jet. Hours later, Brandon arrives in Bogota, and the driver that picks him up can't stop fanboying over him because Brandon is well known for his amazing career as an elite sniper. Once they reach the National Police Headquarters, Brandon meets Santiago, the officer that has been assigned as his observer, and Captain Garza, the police leader that works as a link between the Colombian cops and the American DEA. Lastly, there's Master Gunnery Sergeant Beckett, who also happens to be Brandon's father. Although they're very happy to see each other again after a while, father and son still refer to each other using their rank for the sake of keeping professionalism. The meeting begins and Brandon learns his target is Morales, the boss of the cartel in Colombia. His empire controls 60% of the contraband routes that go to the US border and specializes in recruiting children from the street to raise them into being his thugs. His network is impossible to trace and nobody has seen him in 10 years, but now he's returned, and they know this because in the last few days, all of Morales' rivals have shown up dead, like the man in the jacuzzi. The difficulty of that shot indicates this sniper is ex-military and Morales must have hired him to get rid of the competition. Recent intel indicates that Morales will be on his farm soon and the agents want to have Brandon as backup while they raid the place, but Brandon turns them down because he doesn't like babysitting. An argument ensues that is suddenly interrupted by Agent Kate from the DEA, who is furious because they started the meeting earlier without her and this is her operation. She's brought all the information about the farm for them to study and wants to know if Brandon will take the mission seriously. Brandon admits he hates this kind of assignment, but he promises to do as he's told. The next day, Kate's DEA agents together with Garza's cops approach the farm while Brandon stays hidden in the woods with Santiago. Beckett watches the live transmission from the office, where he's joined by Agent Sampson of Homeland Security, who is worried that Beckett and Kate are wasting time and resources on intel that hasn't been confirmed. The team parks their trucks at a safe distance and approaches secretly on foot, using the trees to take cover until the time comes. As soon as Beckett gives them authorization, the team rushes in and kicks down the house door, only to discover this activates a trap and the whole building explodes. The agents that were at the back managed to survive the blast, but those at the front all die except for Garza, who is suddenly wounded in the leg by the sniper hired by Morales. Kate, who is hiding behind the farm car, decides to go to him to try to help him escape, but as soon as she picks him up, the sniper shoots again and kills Garza on the spot. This shot allows Brandon to find the enemy's location and fire back, but the other sniper dodges the bullet just in time and runs away before Brandon can try again. Later at the station, a furious Samson demands an explanation for what happened, and they reach the conclusion that someone in the police force must have been selling information. Kettle and Brandon also point out that the sniper had waited for Kate to come out instead of shooting at Garza again immediately, meaning she had been his target all along, and shooting Garza's leg had been bait. The second shot failed only because Kate had accidentally put Garza between her and the sniper. Samson wants to cancel the whole operation but Kate refuses to give up without a proper fight, and their argument goes on for so long that Brandon cuts it to make a deal. The team gets 48 hours to track the enemy and if they fail, then they'll accept to go home. After the meeting is over, Beckett tells Brandon that the other sniper probably knows who he is after that shot, so he better be careful. Then, Brandon goes to get his room at the DEA safe house in Las Cruces, where he'll be staying while he's working here in Colombia. No matter how many times the other agents swear the security is top-notch, Brandon still considers any decent sniper could shoot easily into any of the rooms. Meanwhile the sniper hired by Morales, who is known as El Diablo, is having fun with his girlfriend when he's suddenly interrupted by a call that informs him Kate and Brandon are staying in the DEA safe house. El Diablo failed to kill them once, so this is his chance to fix his mistake. Back to Brandon, he is reading an article online about his friend's death which mentions a crisis in the armed forces because most soldiers end their service with various mental illnesses on their shoulders. Kate suddenly interrupts him to thank him for his support during the meeting, then admits she has never lost a man under her command and is struggling to deal with it. She also thinks something was weird about the way Garza had been shot and Brandon agrees, the shot the sniper managed to pull off should be impossible to do following the laws of physics. Kate explains she doesn't want the sniper, she wants morales, but Brandon points out that this narrow-mindedness of hers has caused many people to die. Offended, Kate rushes out of the room, breaking into tears as soon as she enters the elevator because Garza had been a close friend of hers and she feels guilty about his death. 
While Brandon keeps researching new types of bullets and checks on Santiago's guard shift using a radio, Kate goes to have a drink at a popular bar where she has to get violent with a harasser that lets his hands wander too much. Next she meets with Carlos, a priest beloved by the community for his work with people in need. Carlos thinks Kate can't win against such a dangerous man like Morales and that she should quit, but Kate still refuses to give up, so Carlos decides to share the little information he has. The sniper is known as El Diablo, and since he was hired by Morales, he should know the location of his hideout. Before leaving, Carlos promises to contact Karen if he can find out anything else. Back at the safe house, Santiago urgently calls Brandon when he finally notices something dangerous, so Brandon rushes to the roof with his own weapon. Santiago is correct, there's a sniper hidden in the distance, and now Brandon and El Diablo are patiently waiting to see who shoots first. Brandon is the first one to open fire, but El Diablo quickly dodges the bullet before shooting back. As he jumps out of the way and hides behind a wall, Brandon decides to stay there for a while, hopefully making El Diablo believe he's dead. The next morning, the team retrieves the bullet and contacts Miller on a video call to get his expertise on the subject. This is a smart bullet that comes with laser guide technology, allowing you to control its trajectory. There's a chance El Diablo isn't former army after all, or not even a good shot at all, the bullets are just doing the work for him. Miller also points out this safe house isn't very safe, validating Brandon's feelings. Samson finishes the meeting after promising to find a decent shelter by contacting the CIA. Meanwhile Morales is in his safe house playing games with his boys, although he teaches them to fight for what it's theirs without being afraid using a very tough kind of love that makes many of them fear him more than actually respect him. Afterward, Morales goes to his office intending to call El Diablo, only to find him already there on his chair. El Diablo wants to be paid for all the competitors he's killed, but Morales refuses because he didn't kill Kate or Brandon too to complete the job and kicks El Diablo out of his house, claiming he doesn't really need him. The next morning, Kate and Brandon are going to a new safe house by car when Kate receives a call from Carlos, who has discovered El Diablo has a girlfriend. He texts Kate her address but also asks her to be careful because Morales' men control the neighborhood. After hanging up, Kate tells Brandon that she's realized he isn't interested in the operation itself, he only wants to find the sniper because his bullets are better than his skills. Brandon admits it's true, but before he can say more, the car is run over by a truck. A bunch of men working for Morales come out of the truck and open fire on them, so Brandon and the cops that have been escorting them shoot back while Kate runs to find a place to hide. All of Morales' thugs end up dead, but sadly so does Santiago. Brandon notices Kate is gone and discovers she accidentally dropped her phone on the car seat, the text on the screen still displays the address Carla sent. As soon as she arrives at this shady neighborhood, Kate can tell there are lots of men keeping an eye on her. She knocks on the door at the right address and meets Morales' girlfriend Maria, who immediately tries to close the door when Kate shows her badge. Kate tries to stop her, but this gets the attention of all the thugs that now are surrounding her, and Maria pushes her back so that Morales' men can capture Kate. A fight begins between Kate and the men, and while she manages to land a few hits, she still ends up overpowered and pinned against the wall. When the thugs begin getting in line to take advantage of her, Brandon shows up and begins shooting them. A bunch of them fall dead, although one manages to escape on a stolen bike and Karen manages to capture the last one. When she's about to knock him out though, Maria makes her let go of him by threatening her with a firearm. Luckily Brandon surprises Maria from behind and the distraction allows Kate to disarm her. She also takes Maria's locket from her neck, which has a picture of her with El Diablo inside. Brandon sends a photo of it to his father so they can run it through the database with face recognition software, Brando also tells him they were ambushed earlier, meaning someone is still spying on them. Until they find out who, he and Kate will be hiding somewhere else instead of the assigned shelter without even telling Beckett the address. At the station, Samson is getting tense about this whole situation and tries to accuse Beckett of giving his son too much power over the operation, but Beckett ignores him. Kate decides to take Brandon to her old neighborhood so that Carlos can hide them for a while. The priest isn't surprised to hear Morales has moles in the police because he's friends with many powerful people, not to mention all the small criminals that look up to him. Kate realizes that messing with Morales' network may cause him to come out from his hideout, and Carlos accepts to share some names he knows of. During the following couple of days, lots of bodies begin appearing all over town belonging to various men that work for Morales, including his banker. This is all the work of Brandon, who has been killing every name Carlos could provide. Miller calls Beckett to tell him Brandon is out of control, but Beckett doesn't know how to find his son. One evening, Carlos offers Brandon a friendly ear and gets to hear about the Marine that died before this all started. Brando continues to be worried about the same happening to him, so Carlos explains that the only way to avoid such a death is to forgive yourself for the moral damage you've caused. In the meantime, Morales finally leaves his hideout, but only to look for El Diablo at Maria's place. He's sick of losing men, thus he pays El Diablo all the money he owed him in one go and promises much more if he stops Brandon. Sometime later, Samson and Beckett call Miller to update him on the information they've found about El Diablo, his real name is Enrique, and he's an ex-sniper defense. He arrived in Colombia from Venezuela nine months ago, 
but they lost track of him after he crossed the border. Samson wants Miller to take Brandon and Kate out of the operation, but Miller disagrees, pointing out they're doing more for the mission now than anybody else. Meanwhile El Diablo pays off a guy in the neighborhood to tell him where Kate and Brandon are hiding, this is how he learns all about Father Carlos. Later in the evening, Kate receives a mysterious message from Carlos telling her to meet him at the plaza at 10 p.m., but when she tries to call him, Carlos won't answer. It's obviously some kind of trap, so Kate and Brandon sneak into a building in front of the plaza and wait for some indication that El Diablo may be around. A few hours later, a truck parks by the park, and Kate recognizes the guys coming out of it as the thugs from Maria's neighborhood. These men do something mysterious behind the truck before leaving again, and once the vehicle has been moved, Kate and Brandon are shocked to discover Carlos has been tied to a park tree. Kate wants to go and rescue him, but Brandon stops her before she goes out, reminding her this is El Diablo baiting her. Brandon decides to save Carlos by shooting the rope, but his shot only manages to graze it and show El Diablo their location. Fortunately Brandon manages to land a second shot and release Carlos before El Diablo opens fire on them and they run away. This makes El Diablo so furious that he shoots Carlos instead as revenge. The next day, the entire town comes together to say goodbye to the priest, including Kate and Brandon. Standing behind the crowd, Brandon notices the guy that escaped on a bike the other day and goes after him, chasing him through a few streets before he manages to capture him. The guy plays tough at first, but when Brandon reminds him Morales killed the town's beloved priest, the thug breaks into tears because Carlos used to help him when he was on the streets too. After Brandon promises the DEA will offer witness protection, the boy accepts to confess the address of Morales' hideout. With this information, it takes only a matter of minutes for Samson's team to find Morales and finally arrest him, now he'll be taken to Miami to be prosecuted by an American federal court. Brandon worries that El Diablo will try to stop Morales from reaching Miami and spill their secrets, and he's right. A few days later, El Diablo is arriving in the USA with a very convincing fake passport. After passing through customs with no issues, he gets in contact with his bullet provider, who has already left him a car with new weaponry waiting for him. In the Homestead Air Reserve base in Florida, Brandon, Kate, and Beckett watch Morales arrive in a federal helicopter. Then they get together with Miller to make a plan of defense against El Diablo, because they're sure he'll try to attack while Morales is being transported to Miami. Miller also informs them that the type of bullets that El Diablo is using have been disappearing from the DEA's own vault, which means his mole wasn't in the Colombian police but here with them. When Samson arrives to help with the transportation, Brandon explains the plan to him, their agents will guide a convoy that protects a car with a fake Morales wearing a hood over his head to bait El Diablo into revealing his location, but the real Morales will be traveling in a separate van that will look like it belongs to a laundry service. While Kate, Brandon, Miller, and Samson find a place on a roof to be ready for El Diablo, the convoy leaves the air base and hits the road, where a group of criminals is already waiting. Surprisingly, the convoy isn't attacked, the thugs only start moving in their cars when the van shows up as if they had known about the trick all along, they were probably sent by the mole to protect his identity from Morales' confession. El Diablo also waits for the van to show up, and after he shoots it to make it stop, the thugs leave their cars and open firing on the vehicle. Miller expertly kills all these guys, and seeing they weren't able to do much, El Diablo shoots again to make sure the van passengers are dead. The van explodes and now Brandon has El Diablo's location, it only takes him a few seconds to aim and finally kill him for good. The convoy continues to make its way toward Miami, where it's revealed that the man under the hood was Morales after all and the van had been the real decoy. In fact the van had been completely empty and the team moved it with a remote control. Kate, Miller, and Brandon turn on Samson to arrest him because it turns out he's been the guy passing information to Morales and El Diablo all this time. Samson tried to deny it, but Miller's IT team had already hacked his phone, now they just needed to catch him red-handed because the text messages had fake names on them and proved nothing. This makes Samson finally admit he did it and confess he worked for Morales because he had thought the kingpin would be their best option to prevent an atomic bomb. Kate can't believe so many people died for this and punches Samson in the name of Garza and Carlos. After arresting Samson, Miller returns to Washington. Beckett has had enough action to last him a lifetime and decides it's finally time for him to retire, which prompts him to give his son a warm hug before saying goodbye. He also points out that Brandon and Kate make a good team, and Brandon admits playing babysitting for the DEA may not be a bad job to take after all. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.